Welcome to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III motivates us and encourages us to simply just pray for the glory of God. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in over 25 foreign countries. He is the president of Gospel Light Society and Torch Ministries International. Now here's your host, Daniel White III. Welcome to another Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast. This is broadcast number 330. As always, it is so good to be with you today to encourage you to pray. Today, I would like to begin by sharing with you a poem titled, God of Bethel by Philip Dotteridge. O God of Bethel, by whose hand thy people still are fed, who through this weary pilgrimage hast all our fathers led. Our vows, our prayers we now present before thy throne of grace. God of our fathers, be the God of their succeeding race. Through each perplexing path of life, our wandering footsteps guide. Give us each day our daily bread and raiment fit to provide. O oh, spread thy covering wings around till all our wanderings cease and at our Father's loved abode our souls arrive in peace. Such blessings from thy gracious hand our humble prayers implore. And thou shalt be our chosen God and portion evermore. And the church said, Amen. The simple purpose of this broadcast is to motivate, to encourage and exhort you to simply just pray. Do not make a big deal about it. You do not have to conjure up any anything. Just pray and God will do the rest. This radio broadcast is not necessarily for people who already know the secret and power of prayer and who actually practice genuine prayer on a regular basis. Rather, it is for those who may find it difficult to pray, or for people who claim they do not have time to pray. I am convinced that most Christian people do not need to learn how to pray. They need to just pray. If I can get you to just pray, I believe all sorts of wonderful things will begin to happen for you, your family, and whatever God has called you to do. I just believe that. Folks, we need to get back to just old-fashioned, simple prayer to God, communication with God, talking to God and let him talk to us and listen to him. Uh, we do not pray based upon our subjective feelings that has nothing to do with it. We pray based upon objective facts in the Word of God and we walk by faith not by sight. Our prayer motivator verse from the Word of God today again is second Kings 20, 1 through 5, which reads, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos came to him. 
and said unto him, <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore and it came to pass before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying turn again and tell Hezekiah the captain of my people thus saith the Lord the God of David thy father I have heard thy prayer I have seen thy tears behold I will heal thee on the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. Matthew Henry uh, writes about uh, this uh, um, the latter part of this passage and uh, I think it is one of the most eloquent um, the most eloquent um, writing that uh, he has ever done on any passage of scripture. Please listen very carefully. He says, from this passage we observe the circumstances of this prayer. Number one, he turned his face to the wall probably as he lay in his bed. This he did perhaps for privacy. He could not retire to his closet as he used to do, but he retired as well as he could, turned from the company that were about him to converse with God. When we cannot be so private as we would be in our devotions, nor perform them with the usual outward expressions of reverence and solemnity. Yet we must not therefore omit them, but compose ourselves to them as well as we can. Or as some think, he turned his face towards the temple to show how willingly he would have gone up thither to pray this prayer. If he had been able and remembering what encouragements were given to all the prayers that should be made in or towards that house. Christ is our temple. To him we must have an eye in all our prayers, for no man, no service comes to the Father but by him. Number two, he wept sorely. Some gather from this that he was unwilling to die. It is in the nature of man to have some dread of the separation of soul and body. And it was not strange if the Old Testament saints, to whom another world was but darkly revealed, were not so willing to leave this as Paul and other New Testament saints were. There was also something peculiar in Hezekiah's case he was now in the midst of his usefulness, had begun a good work of reformation, which he feared would, through the corruption of the people, fall to the ground if he should die. If this was before the defeat of the Assyrian army, as some think, 
he might therefore be loath to die because his kingdom was in imminent danger of being ruined. However, it does not appear that he had now any son. Manasseh that succeeded him was not born until three years after. And if he should die childless, both the peace of his kingdom and the promise to David would be in danger. But perhaps these were only tears of importunity and expressions of a lively affection in prayer. Jacob wept and made supplication, and our blessed Savior, though most willing to die, yet offered up strong cries with tears to him whom he knew to be able to save him. Let Hezekiah's prayer interpret his tears, and in that we find nothing that intimates him to have been under any of that fear of death which has either bondage or torment. Now, my beloved, even though this may be written in the Old English, if that does not speak to your spirit, I don't know what will. Uh, God anointed him to uh, to pin this beautiful piece, I think, to say something to us today. I thank God for old Matthew Henry. By the grace of God, if the Lord should tarry his coming and we live, we will discuss this passage further in the next broadcast. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today my personal encouragement uh, to you is be aware as you make up your mind to pray more and as you actually pray more uh, things are not going to immediately be a bed of roses for you your days are not going to be problem free quite the contrary why because satan will be there to meet you head on he does not want you to pray. He does not want you to tap into your source of strength and power. He does not want you to call upon Jesus. So therefore, he will throw every obstacle your way to prevent you from praying. Satan does not mind you learning about prayer, but he does not want you to get into the habit of praying. Why? Because something happens when a Christian prays. Something happens when a Christian communicates with God. Satan does not want the Christian to pray because he knows he will be defeated through prayer. Our prayer motivator quote today is from C.H. Spurgeon. He said, The bell in the steeple may be well hung, fairly fashioned, and of soundest metal, but it is dumb until the ringer makes it speak, and the preacher has no voice of quickening for the dead in sin, or of comfort for living saints, unless the divine spirit gives him a gracious pull and begs him speak with power. Hence the need of prayer for both preacher and hearer. Somebody ought to say amen. Our prayer motivator devotional today is part 10 of our series, if you will, titled Why Fasting and Prayer is Important. From that Prince of Prayer, Dr. John R. Rice, in his fine book, Prayer Asking and Receiving. Today we are going to discuss the things we can get by fasting and prayer. Fasting is an aid and adjunct of prayer. Some things never come to a child of God 
but by prayer and fasting. If prayer is good, then more prayer is better. If earnest prayer pleases God, then sometimes surely he is pleased when the prayer is so earnest that we do not want food, nor drink, nor sleep, or any other ordinary pleasure. If God is pleased for us to seek him, then sometimes surely it pleases him for us to lay aside every weight, abstain from everything that might absorb our energy and interest and thought, that we may give ourselves wholly to the matter of prayer. We name here some things that Christians have a right to seek by prayer and fasting, things which God has in times past given his people because of their prayer and fasting. Help in time of trouble often comes from fasting and prayer. God says in Psalm fifty fifteen, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. A time of trouble is a good time to pray. If it is a good time to pray, and if the trouble is severe, then it is a good time to fast. Two, Joshua and the elders of Israel remained prostrate before the ark of God from morning until evening without eating after the Israelites were defeated by the men of Ai. It was a time of distress, of defeat, of shame, of fear. The very destiny of the nation seemed at stake when they fasted and prayed. God showed them the sin that hindered victory. Now, friend, it is actually time for us to pray. Please remember the announcer will provide the information for you to send in your prayer requests at the end of this broadcast if you're so led to do so. We count it a privilege to pray for you. Holy Father God, as we have just been reminded, help us to understand the importance of fasting and prayer in our lives and to discipline ourselves to do it according to your will and way. Lord, we pray also that you would bless and guide and direct all of your pastors and strengthen all of your preachers your church leaders and missionaries to stand for you in these last and evil days. We pray for them in this country and around the world who stand, uh, Lord, for you. Uh, we pray that they would continue to do so and do it uh, in a strong way. And uh, we pray for those who in the ministry are truly helping your people in feeding your sheep. We pray also in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the revival of your church. We pray for the healing, Lord, of every Christian family. We pray, Lord, for over three million people to come to know your Savior. I know that this is your will, and I know that you're going to do this. We pray for the healing of this nation and Lord, we pray for all governmental officials, including the president, save them, lead them, guide them, direct them, give them wisdom, help them to repent of their sins, their lies, and their foolishness. Uh, all of the officials, we pray for them in this country and around the world. Now, Lord, we pray for three people who have sent in their prayer requests. We pray for Brenda in Houston, Texas, help her husband, and her three children to be saved before she dies. Deliver her oldest daughter from the negative attitude she has toward family. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'd rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his hosts from this family. We pray, Lord, for Nancy in Germany. Give her a financial breakthrough and marital restoration. 
Give her protection to her family and children. Help her son, Francis, to be used for your kingdom. Lord, we pray for Virginia. Heal her of pneumonia, lymphoma, cancer, and blood clots today. Lord, heal Virginia. Bring her daughter, Gwen, back to her and bless her son with a job and a house. Our Holy Father God, we pray for the following people who have recently trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them in the faith and have them to grow in the faith, to be strong, spirit-filled Christians, that you would lead God and direct them to a good Bible-believing church. We pray specifically, Lord, for Junior in Haiti, Angelica in Pasco, Peru, and Loya, Loi in Vietnam. Lord, what a privilege it is to pray for these folks. Now, Lord, we pray for the following people who have been saved for a while, but who have recommitted their lives to you. We rejoice with them in this great decision, and we pray that they will keep their commitments to you and be strengthened in the faith. We pray specifically for Basil in Nigeria, Nativ in Kazakhstan, Laurindika in India. We pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ and we commit all of these people into thine hand and we pray that you would continue to bless them and their families. Save every soul in their family. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake we believe it. Amen. Dear friend, before I leave you, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your first prayer needs to be what we call the sinner's prayer. Why? Because you are a sinner and so am I. We have broken God's laws. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because of our sin, there's a punishment and there's a penalty. The wages of sin, the Bible says, is death. The wages of sin is death. We die physically and go to the grave. We also die spiritually and go to hell if we're not saved. You say, well, preacher, how do I get saved? Well, here's the good news for you. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you are willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, please pray with me this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done some bad things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today. Amen. Dear friend, if you prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart, congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, go to gospellightsociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. Until next time, remember, dear friend, pray, think, do. God bless you.